I'm on Midway, right in the middle of the Pacific, as remote as you can get, but this place is on the receiving end of a tidal wave of plastic rubbish, brought here on the ocean currents. Everything from plastic bags to bottles to baskets, even computers. This stuff washes ashore here every day, and it really matters, because Midway is home to one of the world's largest populations of albatrosses, and the parents feed the plastic to their chicks. Now, the kind of things that turn up here are what we use every day. And much of that is made in China, especially the plastic carrier bags. James Reynolds is there. This country produces billions of these flimsy plastic bags every year. It's not particularly surprising because if you go into a corner shop in China and you want to buy, say, a pack of chewing gum, the shopkeeper is likely to wrap it in several plastic bags like this before he hands it over. China is clogged up with plastic waste. This country makes a lot of the world's products, but it also deals with and buries a huge amount of the world's garbage. This is 2008, it's Olympic year, and China wants to tidy up. So, from the 1st of June this year, if you go into a Chinese shop, the shopkeeper will no longer give you one of these for free when you buy anything. Instead, you'll have to pay for it. China wants to tidy up. And in the world's other leading emerging economy, things have barely even begun. My colleague Damien Grammaticus is in India. Not long ago, the Indian government deliberately encouraged producers here to make plastic bags so they didn't have to be imported. Now, they've become a scourge. Three years ago, massive floods hit India's commercial capital Mumbai and surrounding areas. A thousand people died. Plastic bags were partly to blame because they'd clogged the city's drains. The bags have now been banned in Mumbai, but across India, the problem of plastic waste remains widespread and damaging. And that's exactly what they're finding in the birthplace of plastic, the United States. Rajesh Merchandani is there. Thanks, Damien. Here, they call this urban tumbleweed. There's so much of it floating around. In the last estimates, America uses 380 billion plastic bags every year. In fact, the country that launched the plastic revolution is now swamped by the stuff. A little gets recycled, but much is just discarded and ends up in waterways, like here at Compton Creek in Los Angeles. When it rains, much of this waste is swept out to sea. And here at Santa Monica Beach, you can see a lot is washed back ashore, often broken down into smaller pieces so it's hard to see, but it's there. Santa Monica has already banned styrofoam like this, and it's thinking of banning these. But so far, the only city in America to ban plastic bags is San Francisco, which means the amount of plastic waste swept out to sea continues increasing. Condemned to death by plastic, the hook in the beak of this albatross chick means it can't feed and faces starvation. Wildlife expert John Clavitta tries to help. Plastic is emerging as a real danger. And hold the wings like that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Any idea yet what it might be? Not yet. I just want to make sure there's nothing sharp. There could it. be a hook on the end or something. Yeah, and it looks like we're going to be able to get it out. There we go. And now it's we can like release little... the chick. Okay. It's a small nice. net that once held fruit in a distant supermarket. Piece by piece, this kind of plastic creeps relentlessly towards midway on the tide. Being remote is no defense. And right now, the chicks are hungry. There are nearly two million albatrosses here, and they're all at risk. The problem for an albatross chick like this is that its staple food is squid, when all too often its parents mistakenly feed it plastic, like these cigarette lighters. They look incredibly similar, but these can prove fatal. Now, what researchers here are finding is that every single albatross on Midway contains some quantity of plastic. You couldn't get a clearer example of how our plastic waste has become such a threat to the natural world. It's disheartening. Matt see, Brown, a manager here, shows me what's inside one dead bird. As you poke around inside what was the gut, you find a bit of a that, toothbrush. The of a toothbrush, by the looks of it, uh, yeah. Some fishing line, a bottle cap. Fighting the plastic requires a constant effort, an attempt to clean up. 
I've only been here for a month, so I haven't had time to see yet my work just get covered over again by the next storm. So But that's you know. the risk. Yeah, yeah, pretty much every every storm. We filmed one operation for just 30 minutes. Here it is speeded up. Look how much rubbish was found on this one stretch of shoreline. It was these waters that saw the great Battle of Midway in 1942, when America first turned back the Japanese. Now there's a new enemy. If today the world stopped um, letting plastics reach the marine ecosystems, still for generations this is going to wash up on our beaches. The oceans are filled with this stuff. And the fact that more and more is being deposited uh, into the oceans, just the problem is, is growing, not shrinking. The albatrosses have survived here for thousands of years, but researchers fear that plastics, only with us for 50 years, could threaten their very existence. David Shookman, BBC News, on Midway in the Pacific. Uh.